I'm with Professor Janet Powell from Imperial College in London, and she's also a member of the CX Organizing Program Board. Professor Powell presented 12 month data yesterday from the improved trial for the first time here at Charing Cross. Professor Powell, could you please give us the main findings from this trial? The main findings from this trial related to how many patients survived an operation after having a ruptured aortic aneurysm. And although we didn't find what we had hoped to find, which was that the new endovascular procedure would save lives and reduce mortality, we did find that it had other benefits which were very important to patients. And when we talked to patients before setting up this trial, the key concerns of the patients were obviously to live, but not to live at any price. Mm -hmm. What they and their families all said was, we want to get back home as quickly as possible, and we want to get home without any further disability or bad effects. And if an operation is going to leave us in a nursing home, we're not really sure we want it. So we saw some benefits for EVAR over open repair? Yes. So the benefits were more related to quality of life? They were related to quality of life, how soon the patients left hospital, whether they needed convalescent care or not. Mm -hmm. And overall, which is very important, particularly for the NHS and other national healthcare systems, is that it was cost effective. That's a very important point. Yes. So on the basis of these results, you made a recommendation that emergency bar should be more widely used. Could you put this into context? What we suggested was it should become more widely available. available. Because at the moment, we know that not all vascular centers are capable of offering endovascular repair throughout the week, day and night. Mm -hmm. And we think that the results of this trial support the increasing use of endovascular repair and that it should always be available so that there's equity of access to care for patients. Right. A meta-analysis of three randomized trials, the three randomized trials, has uh, suggested that many of the findings of the improved trial are kind of correlated. Um, what are the key findings from this meta-analysis? Well, the key findings from the meta-analysis that, is that the important points from all three trials reinforce one another. And the three trials were conducted in France, the Netherlands, as well as mainly in the United Kingdom. Could you remind us the names of these trials? Yes, the one in Holland was the Ajax trial after the Ajax Football Club. All right. <laughs> and the one in France was called the ECAR trial. And I think if I'm correct, the ECAR is a ballerina. All right. Just remember it. <laughs> um, and they all had slightly different designs, but I think it, it's particularly important for Europe because here we have three separate European randomized trials, which essentially tell us the same thing. Patients, there's no better patient survival after endovascular repair than open repair. And if there are benefits for endovascular repair, it's other than on absolute survival. Interesting, very important data. You have also made the point that women form a high proportion of those denied treatment for rupture aneurysm. What can you tell us about the association of the female gender and aneurysm rupture? How does this play out? Well, although far fewer women than men have aortic aneurysms, at least in the United Kingdom, women are not screened for aortic aneurysms, whereas men are. Therefore, if you look at current trends, whereas perhaps about 15 years ago, women only comprised about one-eighth of the cases of rupture. Just one-eighth. Today, they mm -hmm. comprise one-third. Okay. So there are an increasing proportion of the ruptures that we see. Yes. 
Is there any reason why? Can we maybe suggest the reasons why this is happening? Well, it's happened partly because of the screening of men only. Mm -hmm. And it's also happened, I think, to do with the historical smoking habits in women. Um, men started smoking in large numbers long before women did. So women have got a bit of a catch-up. and Smoking is by far the strongest risk factor for abdominal aortic aneurysm. So this is correlated with increasing number of women actually smoking? As yeah, well. in the past, yes. Okay. So, what are the other indications for aneurysm growing and rupturing? What lifestyle factors have actually had an impact of growth and rupture? Well, again, smoking is the big factor, not only getting an aneurysm, but also it's the, really the only well-established figure factor that leads aneurysms to grow faster. Um, it also has a very strong effect on rupture, and current smokers have twice the risk of aneurysm rupture as non-smokers. By far the largest risk factor. Okay. Could we name some other factors? Um, women appear to have a highly increased risk of rupture compared to men, particularly when you match it aneurysm diameter for aneurysm diameter. Mm -hmm. But this may partly be because naturally women would have smaller diameter aortas than men. Okay, thank you. Um, on another note, this is another year with the controversies theme at Charing Cross. Could you please tell us what is the main controversy in the aortic field? I think one of the key controversies in the aortic field is whether endovascular repair is going to be successful in going through into the arch of the aorta. Mm -hmm. There's a considerable amount of debate about that at the moment, and I think that's a topic wide open for the future. And it will continue, probably for yes. the next sharing process. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, to conclude, could you please tell us what makes Charing Cross a special event? I think that it's got now got a fantastic venue. I think it's a major conference that really it makes a focus on debating the evidence and allows sufficient time to mm -hmm. discuss it properly. So this is what you value the most yeah. from this. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your valuable insight and we hope to see you in CX 2016. I hope to come. Thank you. Thank you very much.